Hello guys, this is Bandspice36. Today's video is going to be an unboxing review of this kit. This is Tacom's new-ish T29E3. It is a very late war, you could kind of say, American heavy tank prototype. And they also have released a T30-34, not a Russian T34, an American T34. There's no hyphen. And that's a very, very similar kit to this because the tank was a, kind of like a competing design for this. The gun is slightly larger in that kit. I think it's like a it's like a 120, and this is a 105 or something like that. The turret's different; it doesn't have the uh, the range finders here. There's a couple of differences. I think the hull is slightly, slightly different in the front as well. Essentially, the T29 is a Pershing tank that's been kind of inflated, <laughs> and the armor is incredibly thick. And this is kind of a uh, it was meant to counter like the Panther and the King Tiger and stuff like that. And of course, they made a couple of them as prototypes and then the war ended so it didn't really go anywhere and eventually this program led into things like the M103 which did see limited service in West Germany for a while there in the Cold War. Now as you might be able to tell from the box art this is very inspired by World of Tanks. I'm pretty sure this kit was only ever released because World of Tanks had kind of brought interest to these super heavy lay war prototype type vehicles so the marking option and the camouflage and everything like that that's all like straight out of World of Tanks and it's kind of cool, I actually like this camouflage a lot. So I think when I build it, I might actually do this exact same camouflage because it looks pretty cool. On the side of the box, we have two more marking options. One is just like standard green. This is basically what the tank looks like in real tanks when you first get it and don't paint it or anything like that. And then we have another option over here. This is another camouflage pattern that's supplied in the game. It's just kind of the same thing that has some little squiggles on it. And all the marking options are just different camouflages with the same star and the same 35 number on the back. So. Not too much variation, but I mean, this is these are all fictional camouflage parents anyway, so you can kind of go with whatever you want. On the side of the box, we just have the box art again and the name of the kit. On this side, we have a sprue layout showing all the sprues in the kit. And we also have some advertisements for other kits that they've released. T14 Armada, Chieftain, they have a couple of Chieftains out. They're pretty good kits. T55 here, and here's the, uh, the T30-34 I was talking about. So TACOM always has this really nice kind of instruction manual, or I guess you call it a booklet, different than what you might see in a Dragon or early Tamiya kit, which is like a huge piece of paper that you have to like unfold into basically a map. It's a huge thing, covers your whole workbench. This is very small. It's like, you know, standard piece of paper size, 8.5 by 11, A4, wherever you live. And, you know, each page is an individual step. You don't have to unfold 10 pages at once. So it's kind of small and controlled. I like that a lot. So to begin we have some warnings here, stuff like that, don't let children suck on any part. Then we have over here the sprue layout, you can see we have not too many sprues in this kit as this kit has no interior whatsoever. And it's fairly simple because it's just kind of like a prototype tank so it's basically just like a huge hull with, there's not that much parts that kind of go onto the hull apart from the suspension and the wheels and stuff like that as well. So you see we've got like wheels, turret bits, fenders and side skirts. Lots of tracks, hull and turret over here, engine deck stuff over here, upper hull stuff, some um, kind of forms to help make the tracks and line up the suspension arms. And then the sprue over here has more turret bits and the gun barrels. And the assembly is fairly straightforward. It's kind of what you always see, you know, put a couple bits on the hull here, put on some suspension, put the wheels on. You have a jig here, which is kind of cool. This actually helps you form the tracks. You basically have a jig that you, I'll show you this when I go through the kit pieces. You put on the front and rear wheel, so the, the idler wheel. Drive sprocket, and you can actually just basically make the tracks, put them onto this big plastic piece that they give you. Don't glue it to that piece, but that'll help you form them into the exact shape you need to line up with the wheels on the hull. So it's kind of like a, a simpler way to set up the tracks. I think that's a great idea, and also I'm pretty sure you can also use this to help line up the suspension arms as well because there's a holes in it, so that's a great bonus as well. Now we put on some more parts in the upper hull here. Nothing too complicated, just hatches and stuff like that. Lower hull details. Engine deck goes on. A huge barrel uh, brace, travel lock, sorry, that's what it's called. Fenders go on here. Exhausts go on the fenders. Some tow cables go on. Uh, same thing on the other side over here. We have a couple of tools that go on, but mainly just these big stowage bins, which are one piece. A lot of parts in this kit are kind of simplified into one section, which isn't bad. 
I think that's such a great idea because, you know, just put the whole thing on. If you want to do some damage, of course, you can just kind of like cut sections out of the uh, the side skirt thingy here, but it's kind of just one big piece you put on. I'm not going to do anything like that to my kit, so it's fine. Then we're just putting on these fenders, a couple of details on the front, including a clear headlight piece, and a couple of these little very small like, kind of like mounting points for the tow cable on the tank. Then we move on to the turret here. As you will first, we do the same thing on the opposite side headlights. Then we have to drill some holes for the turret, put on a couple of bits, not too complicated, just typical kind of like a ventilation, hatches, gun sights, stuff like that. Cupola over here is a clear part, which is great, so you can just mask off the little viewports. And then when you paint it, you know, the whole thing will get painted with the color of the tank, except for the viewports there, which will be clear. We have the anti-aircraft machine gun to go on, which is a 50 cal. And then we have a couple more bits over here, like hatches and stuff like that. Then the last kind of step here is where we go into, I guess, the uh, the front of the the gun here, the gun mantlet and the gun barrel itself. A uh, cool thing to note is actually the, the this tank is two 50 caliber coaxial machine guns, which, which I think is pretty insane, but it's pretty cool. And you have an option here, actually. Well, I think you can build both because these don't use any of the same pieces. So you have the gun mantlet with a dust cover and a gun mantlet that is just exposed. So of course you have options which one you want to do and you can actually probably build both and maybe be able to swap them out if you want so it's kind of cool. Then last steps over here just putting on the the gun man that whichever one you choose stick it on the turret or stick the turret on the hull and you're good. Now attached to the back of the instruction manual we have the painting and marking guide here. There's three options. They give you full color views here that you show all the sides not just like one side the top and the front sometimes you get in dragon kits which is kind of irritating. So you've got, these are the same camouflages on the box, this is the box art one, the tritonal one from World of Tanks, and you have the uh, the green with the lighter squiggle ones I showed you. Then we also have over here, this last one here, which is just a typical solid olive green, olive drab, whatever, color for the tank. And all the markings are the same, you basically just get that star, 35 and this number to go on the side there, and that's it. So, I mean, it's not too creative, but of course you can do whatever you want with it, because it's basically, these are all fictional marking options. So now let's begin to look at actually the parts in the kit. So first of all, we have this uh, clear sprue here. These are all kind of packaged together as the extra bits. So you have a clear sprue that has some parts here. Of course, you have the cupola, which you can mask off the uh, little viewports for. So when you paint it, you know, it'll get painted with a solo color of the tank, except when you remo remove your masking fluid or masking tape, you'll have the exposed clear bits there, which is kind of cool. Might be a little easier if it was separate parts to put in, but that's kind of also complicated. Then we have some headlights here, which are very, very small. We have a large viewport. I'm not sure where that goes. I think that goes on top of the turret somewhere. And then we have two small little vision blocks here, which are for the drivers and the co-drivers hatches on the front of the tank. We also have two of these tow cables. They're not copper, but they're very flexible. They kind of resemble copper in that way. They're kind of frayed at one end, but you will have to cut this down a significant amount, so it's kind of okay. So this end's pretty clean, so you just chop it somewhere else there. You can kind of make sure it sits a little bit better and they go into actual plastic parts on the kit which are going to hold them down uh, they, I like how they're more flexible than the steel ones you get in dragon kits and they're also very very thick but they are very flexible which is nice so they won't be too hard to get to sit into place and finally here we have the decals like I've said before just have the stars, the numbers and these USA number markings on the side so hopefully you can see that it's a little bit shiny and hard to see decals often but they're there. I haven't actually used TACOM decals before, but I think they're probably fine. Next up, let's look at the jigs here. These are for mainly assembling the tracks and having them line up in a kind of like... Basically, you can glue them into one huge kind of preformed plastic section, which you can just kind of have separate. There's a big thing of tracks, and you can paint that separately and then put it on when you're all done. I like doing that a lot with my dragon tracks, the magic tracks. I'll, do it, I'll actually do it kind of with the wheels instead but this is probably even easier having a separate piece here. Looks pretty good. This is a good addition to the kit. I think it will help out beginners. Now let's have a look at the lower hull and the upper turret sections here, which are kind of like large preformed, probably slide molded sections in the kit. So the actual hull itself here isn't... Well, it's pretty good, but I mean it's not that impressive because it's just the lower hull tub. So there's really good rivet details on the sides here for all these uh, mounting points for the torsion bars, I guess, the swing arms. Tons of wheels on this thing, but looks pretty cool. 
And then there is a slight cast texture on the front here. Same thing with the turret. I'll show you that in a second here. You know, it may be hard to see, but hopefully it's not too washed out. But there is definitely a, a not too subtle. It's fairly distinct cast texture on the front there, which is great because this should be a cast piece. Hopefully you guys can see that. If not, trust me, it looks pretty good. And then we have a similar cast texture on the turret here. Again, I hope you can see that. There's also some nice welds right along here as well. The welds look really good. And there are some very, very faint kind of like uh, seam lines for the molding process. These don't look like they're supposed to be there. Often when things are cast like this, like you see a Sherman, a Sherman kind of has like a cast seam kind of on the back there on it. Not, not a weld seam, like a casting seam. But there are kind of like actual plastic molding seams. You might be able to see a very, very faint straight line kind of along there and goes up there. Um, that's not supposed to be there, I'm pretty sure. But you can just get rid of that pretty easily. And if you need to reform the cast texture a little bit, that's very, very easy to do. Just use a little bit of putty and you can kind of stipple that on. I'm probably going to do that to kind of emphasize the cast texture on the turret here. But it looks pretty good as is. So hopefully you guys can see it. So the entire turret itself is quite massive and has good molding on it for the very few actual like solid pieces there are. You might also be able to see that there are actually kind of cast numbers into it right there and there, which I'm certain are supposed to be there and looks pretty cool. And to give you guys some scale, here's a here's a T34 turret next to it. It's huge. There's actually four guys in the dirty in the turret here. There's two loaders, commander and a gunner. So this sprue here contains the gun mantlet itself. A few parts here for the actual just turret details in general. We have gun barrels here in halves. This part here which goes in the rear of the turret, I think it's a ventilator. A couple of little like hatches and stuff like that for the viewfinders and or the rangefinders. And these go on the sides of the mantlet, I'm fairly certain. Now the gun barrels being in halves is one of the issues I think with this kit. There's no aftermarket barrels out for this yet, so that's kind of you know an issue because these are quite large barrels as you can see. So you're going to have to do some cleanup on that seam you're going to get, basically where the halves go together. Especially because the front of the barrel here kind of has almost like threading where the actual um, muzzle brake would screw on in real life. So I mean, it's kind of meh, but you might be able to find an aftermarket barrel for a similar tank, a 105 or something like that. That might work, but hopefully somebody actually releases aftermarket barrel for this kit soon. Because these barrels are quite long, and it would be impressive to have a nice metal one for it. Hopefully you can see there's a little bit of that cast texture again on the sides of the mantlet here. Looks basically the same as it did on the, the top of the turret and the hull and stuff like that. So that's pretty good. And maybe you might also be able to see that there's a very, very small number molded in right there on these uh, rangefinder doors. There you can see it there. And once again, I'm certain that's supposed to be there and it looks pretty awesome. And then over here is the, uh, the mantlet itself with the twin 50 caliber machine guns which I don't think are hollowed out, so... Actually, I think they are. Hold on. Oh, yeah, they are. Sorry. They are actually hollowed out, so... Looks good. And again, there's that little bit of a cast texture on it. Probably going to upgrade that a little bit with some putty and stuff like that, but it looks good as is. The next spur here contains basically the rest of the turret components here. We have a ton of little handles and details and stuff like that. Back of the turret, the entire bottom of the turret here. And we have kind of like the canvas mantlet covers here and then I think another mantlet there was one on the other spur right and then we have hatches and then more little bits and the 50 cals of machine guns over there once again I hope it's not too washed out but I I hope you can see that there's actually a very nice cast texture on the turret just like there was on the top and on the hull as well and there's also that on the back of the turret here now we have the turret hatches over here and as you can see there's a really nice Kind of like coil springs on them for the actual mechanism there, which is really great. And then we have the 50 caliber machine gun over here, which is actually nicely molded. You can see there's very nice details in the porting there. I mean, there's some molding points attached to the barrel, but that shouldn't be too hard to clean up. And it looks like the end is not hollowed out. Yeah, the end isn't hollowed out. But that shouldn't be too hard to do with a number 11 blade or something like that, because it's very small anyways. And then, obviously, the other half of the receiver is over here. Now here are some of the bits for the dust cover for the manlet. These kind of replace the actual manlet pieces we were looking at in the other sprue. So these are the sides. You have like the top and the bottom here. 
the natural fronts over here. And they look really good actually. There's a really nice texture on them. But I'm not sure how convinced how convincing it's actually gonna look when you put them all together. And of course you're gonna have seams where they line up, so you're gonna have to do some filling there and some sanding and smoothing and stuff like that, but they do look pretty nice. So I will give it a try when I build the kit. I'll build both up and I'll compare it and see how they look and I'll choose one. Now this sprue here just has basically the fender details on it as well as the final drives for the rear where the drive sprockets attach. And it's kind of boring, it's just basically you got the fenders, the side skirts here, the fender sides, the fender rears, and some stowage bins to go kind of on the fenders. So it's pretty basic, but there are a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, this sprue has lots of grease on it, which is something I didn't notice in any of those sprues. You can definitely see there. It's shiny and greasy, and that thing is basically repeated around every single one of these little kind of guide supports here for the fenders themselves. And also on the back of the sprue, the parts have some more of that kind of thing. You might be able to notice on the inside of the fenders here. And also the inside of the fenders have these pin marks, which aren't too bad, but I think these will be visible because these kind of curve down. If you look down the side of the tank, you might be able to see them. And also on the bottom of the fenders themselves, you have pin marks as well as these which are just kind of like extension pin mark thingies which are just kind of stupid I mean they're there you just cut them off and sand them down but still they're just kind of ugly and it's more work to the kit so it seems like basically every sprue on this kit has pin marks on the inside but since this kit has no interior it's not too bad except for just here on these fenders where it's a little bit of an issue also again this sprue is a little bit greasy so I have to make sure I kind of wash off any of that stuff before I actually build the kit. This sprue here is basically the rest of the upper hull components as well as a few suspension bits over here. We have basically the uh, the top of the hull, front of the hull area, hatches there, gun travel lock and a whole bunch of little mechanisms and small pieces and tools to fight down the sprue. Once again good cast texture on both the front hatches here as well as the entire front of the hull. And of course those two little hatches go right there and there, there for the driver and the battle gunner slash radio operator, I'm fairly certain it's that guy's job. But there's that same cast texture there. I will have to do some research whether or not I need to like, make weld seams on the front where that meets with the uh, the cast texture on the bottom of the hole like I showed you at the very beginning. Or if I'll actually have to blend that into one big cast piece. I'm not sure if it's a seam, a weld seam, or one piece, so it'll depend. I'll have to do some research. The gun travel lock over here looks really good and also very very massive. We have the uh, the port for the battle machine gun here that might need to be actually cast so you might need to texture that up a little bit. Details here all look really nicely molded. Then we have some tools over here. I think these are some kind of cutters with a little canvas cover there. We have like an axe, sledgehammer, a shovel up here. I don't think you're going to use all these tools because it looked like they weren't all being put on the hull, but maybe this is kind of a. Some of these might be used in the T34 kit as well. But they're nicely molded and there's very, very minimal flash and very, very. or sorry, no flash and very, very minimal seam lines on any of these pieces, so I'm liking how this kit's looking so far. Here is the bow machine gun. It's a 30 cal, smallest machine gun on the tank. And once again, there's no hole drilled out there, so we'll have to hollow that out a little bit or get an aftermarket barrel. But the detail on the side looks really good, actually. This sprue here is basically the rest of the upper hull components. We have the engine deck here, a couple of pieces for the back of the hull. I think this also is part of the back of the hull as well. And then the exhausts here, which are in halves, but they're kind of well designed. So let's look at these a little bit closer. So even though the exhausts are molded in halves, they line up, basically the seam will, will, will line up with the opposite side of this little kind of like thicker section there. So it will blend in nicely. Uh, overall, don't, not, don't think it'll be too bad. And also, of course, I might want to add a little bit of texture to these, make them look kind of like a rusty and crusty a little bit. So I think they did a good job on that, lining up the seam line with the actual edge of this extension piece here. Detail on the louvers and the engine deck looks good. Considering there's no PE in this kit at all, I think they did a nice job with these vents here. There's no grills for them, but I think it's fine. And also, if you look, there's these little kind of like hatches there, or latches or handles or whatever. And they look very, very good. They're almost 3D looking in the way that they're molded. Very sharp, very, very deep, I guess. It's well done. 
So in the kit we have two of these sprues, they're exactly the same, so we're only going to look at one. As you can see we have basically the wheels, spare tracks here, suspension elements, especially the suspension arms over there. Lots of little small details, and also we have exhausts here, which I'm fairly certain are for the T34-30, so you don't use those in the kit. Looking closer at the wheels, they've actually designed this pretty well. They've set up the wheels here so that the actual um, top of them is lined up with the bottom of where the two presses would go together. Usually you have the center of the wheel lined up there, which when you, you basically end up with a seam line along the edge of the wheel because the top and the bottom of the press go together and you have a little bit of a gap there. But here actually the top will just kind of cover it, so you actually don't have a seam line around the wheel itself, just the four molding points, so that should speed up the process. I'll clean these up even though there's you know a ton of wheels in this kit. Detail looks really good here. Again, we have minimal seam lines, stuff like that, because they've engineered it well, so everything's lined up nicely with the actual presses in the uh, molding process. And I can see no flash on any of these pieces. The detail looks really good. I'm not too sure where these little things go, but they look very, very small, and they look kind of fiddly, but hopefully it's not too much of a problem to put them on. They look like little tiny handles or latches for maybe the... Uh, the stowage boxes on the side of the fenders like we were looking at earlier. So this last sprue in the kit here is all the tracks. This is the tracks for both sides. You have straight sections for all the you know, straight sections of track. So it's pretty easy. You don't have like a billion track links to go. About half of it at least is these nice long straight sections for you. Which simplifies the process a lot. And though that's not good for some tanks, it looks good for this tank because it shouldn't have really any slack. And also you have those side skirts which cover up the existence of any slack on the top run anyways, so no no big deal. I think this is a, gr a great idea to simplify the process here. This whole kit seems kind of like they've they tried to engineer to make it as easy as they can without sacrificing too much detail. So we do have lots of molding points attaching to these sections here, but it shouldn't be too hard to clean them up because they're just the edges and they're very very thin, so you just basically cut them all off and then sand it down a little bit. Shouldn't be too hard. Definitely easier than doing individual links by sprue. So I have noticed there are seam lines along the inside of the tracks here. You can see them exposed along the little round parts there that connect the actual links together. There's a seam line along the whole thing there. Now that's not too bad because that's actually the inside of the track. The part with the duck bills here, these extensions, sticks out. And because the duck bill is basically in the center of it, the uh, that seam line is just kind of along the edge of the, of the duck bill, which is very, very thin, so you can't even see it anyways. So you only really need to clean up those those little seam lines where you actually can see the inside of the track which is basically at the very very front and the very very back because over here you know that's all basically pressed up against the side of the hull so no big deal but what is a big deal is all the pin marks we have along the inside of the tracks here might be hard to see at first but you notice that basically every like third link there's a very very faint pin mark they look mostly raised so you just sand them down but still that's kind of just demoralizing having to clean up all these little pin marks on the whole thing, every single one. The same thing on every single one of these individual links as well. Pin mark there, pin mark there. But they're raised so it's not too bad. But still, I mean, you kinda wish it would be better than that. It just adds up to it just adds to the overall cleanup of the entire kit, so you know it just slows you down a little bit. But still, these tracks look not nicely molded and detailed, so apart from the pin marks and a little bit of flash on these or at least seam lines on the edges there, I think that they've engineered this well with the link and length system. So I hope you enjoyed that look in the box, and hope you kind of have an idea what this kit's like so far. To me, it seems like it's more of an entry-level kit, and the fact that there's no PE. Overall, the number of parts isn't too high, and the link and link tracks kind of simplify the more difficult assemblies there. So I think it's more catered towards people who have maybe been playing World Tanks for a while, think, think these big tanks that are in the game are kind of cool, and maybe want to go in and build a model of something that they like in the game. So definitely this is a good kit if they want to do that. This or like a Tamiya kit, maybe if that's even a little more simple than this, but it's a good kit. I think it's more catered towards a beginner or intermediate modeler, but still, I'm going to have tons of fun building this. I'll do a video build for you guys so you can see what it builds up like, and also do like a weathering video and painting video. You guys mentioned that you want to see a tutorial on doing some battle damage on it, and also kind of like mid to light weathering, and also do a video, if I can, on how I paint the camouflage and stuff like that. As always, thanks for watching very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, a big thanks also goes out to our Patreons, Ricky from Ryan's Painting, Sam Murphy, John Butler, Ian Sustrick, Richard Ward, and Rudolph Kiras. You guys are awesome. Give me a few dollars every month, which helps me out buying kits like this, 
if you guys seen the videos and also for me buying weather products and stuff like that that you, that you guys all see the videos anyway so thank you very much guys and I appreciate it hopefully I didn't sound too tired tonight with this review but I'm kind of exhausted after this week and yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one goodbye